you know, uh, alone or anything of that nature. You know, I always feel like that I have someone near me or someone around me or there's always something that comforts me. But I understand that there's people out there that don't have that same feeling. There's people out there that feel like they're lost, they're alone, that they don't understand why they're in the situation that they're in. They don't understand why they're in the circumstance. They don't understand why, we're li why they're living in the house with people that, number one, don't like them. They're living in a house with people that's doing all kind of crazy things. They're living in a house with people that don't mean them no good. They're working at a place that don't mean them no good. They feel lost and they feel alone. And they say, God, why do you have me in this situation? You feel alone. And so God, he took me back. He took me way back to when I was in Bible college. And it's probably the only time in my life that I can really think about that I got so so down and so out and so depressed and so low to the point that I was like, God, where are you? God, where are you? I, I, I have faith to believe you. I have faith and trust to know that you are going to do exactly what you're going to do. But God, I can't feel your touch. I can't feel your warm embrace. I can't feel you the way that I used to. There's situations that's going on. There's things that's happening in my life that I don't quite understand. But God, why this twist and this turn? God, why am I doing this? Why am I even here? Why? What is my purpose in life? What is my destiny in life? Y'all got to excuse me. I ain't preached in a month. And so I just say, God, what is happening to me in my life? And, and at that time, God is saying that I'm shaping you. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. I'm shaping you into a whole nother person that when you come out of this, you won't even recognize it yourself. You, you'll look in the mirror and say, who is that man looking at me in the mirror? And I'm here to tell you today that I look in the mirror even right now today and say, who is this Shannon E. Young that's looking back at me in the mirror because this I, this was the person that I was 10 years ago. Honey, I told you that it, it's good that we got married only, what, five years ago, six years ago, something like that? Listen, because if, if you'd have met me 10 years ago, if you met me 15 years ago, let me tell you something, honey, I was a mess. My God, come on, come on, come on. Still in ministry, but still a mess. Hallelujah. And God began to show me that uh, uh, there's people that's out there that feel like they're lost, they're alone, that they can't turn to anybody. And God is saying to you, listen, honey, you are not alone. Come on. God is always there for you. Sometimes we live this life and we're lost and we're alone and we're, we're trying to figure this stuff out and we're digging through the trenches of life and we're trying to find out who we are because we actually don't know who we are. We're 20 years old and don't know who we are. We're 30 years old and we don't know who we are. We get into our 40s and 50s uh, 60 years old and don't know who we are. Yes, come on. We, uh, listen, I say this. If you're still in your 20s and you're still in your mid to early 30s and you still don't know yourself, well, baby, let me tell you something. You're in a good position because you can turn around right now in the name of Jesus. One of the things that we be, that me and my wife, that we teach is that if you're trying to do this ministry thing, and even if you're not trying to do this ministry thing, but you're still trying to live life, you got to know who you are. Come on! And not only do you have to know who you are, you got to know whose you are. You got to believe and trust 
that you serve a God that's more than enough, that's too much, that's, uh, that he will overflow you with blessings. He will overflow you with certain things in your life that you need. Our God, he is a deliverer. Our God, he is a way maker. He is the miracle worker. He is the promise keeper in the light, in the darkness. And the song says, my God, hallelujah. I believe when the songwriter wrote the song that they began to think about the stuff that were going on in their life. And they said, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. You're my light in the darkness. I know that I've been in some dark situations. I know that I've been in some circumstances that I couldn't see my way out. But I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I say, God, hallelujah, my light in the darkness that is who you are and i thank you god for being just that being the light in the darkness and that is who you are i know it may seem like that the situation is glim my brother and my sister but i'm here to tell you today that god he is a god of a second chance not only a God of a second chance, but a God of a third chance. He's a God of the fourth chance. He's the God of the fifth and sixth and seventh chance. I don't know what you're going through on the inside of you right now, but I'm here to tell you today that God lives on the inside of you, and he's ready to bring you out of that Lodabar place. Don't stay in that Lodabar place. Don't stay in that low place. Don't feel like that you're stuck in the mud. Get yourself unstuck out of that mud. Get yourself unstuck of that miry place and come out. Come out of that sickness. Come out of that pain. Come out of that darkness. Don't stay there. Get up, get up, get up. This is the part of the message that I was trying to be in. But that's all right. Because God is saying that you gotta get up out of that lowly place. Jesus, come on, it's time for you to get up, take up your bed, and walk. Sometimes we go through life living and living and imagining what we should be, what we should be. It feels like um, that, you know, sometimes we try to work things out in our life. And we're trying to figure out, we're going to, we're going to be a doctor, are we going to be a lawyer, are we going to be a preacher, a teacher, a scientist, a medic. There's hundreds and thousands of different kind of jobs and occupations. And a lot of times we go to these jobs and these occupations, we go to school to do a certain job and a certain occupation. But when you graduate, you have billions of dollars in debt. enough alone to make you say, listen, I'm getting <laughs> Bad enough to make you there alone, able to say, listen, I'm giving up. Some people grow up wanting to be mommies, and they grow up wanting to be daddies, and they, and, and, and they want to be the greatest niece and they want to be the greatest nephew uh, in their life. And they, and they do these studies and they surround themselves around people that's like-minded people. And that's what you got to be able to do in this season. Surround yourself with like-minded kind of people because that's going to help you to achieve your goals that you're trying to get at. Now, let me say this here. If you don't have any goals set up in your life, then let me tell you something. You're not going to move into the place that God wants you Come to be on. in. That's it, Pastor. Come on. You're not going to be able to move into the place that God wants you to be in. So this is the reason why the Bible says this. The Bible says to write uh -huh. 
the vision. Write the vision. Come on, Pastor. And not only write the vision, yes, he said, make it plain. Come on. Sometimes we make stuff so complicated that even God's looking at us like, what is this mess? Come on, come on, come on. It's not even all that much. It's not even all that hard. Why are you even trying? He said to write the vision and to make it plain. So that when you see it, see a lot of times we showing our vision to somebody else. We're showing it to somebody else that don't even know, don't even have no idea of what you even see. And so the, when you when they see it, they're like, man, you crazy. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna that, nothing's gonna come out of that. And so you surround your people with those kind of negative people. But I'm here to tell you today, this detach yourself from them negative, detach yourself from the people that mean you no good, detach yourself from those people that mean you no harm. I'm here to tell you today that you may feel like that you're in a lonely place because you're surrounded around the wrong people. Let me tell you something, this isn't in my notes, this ain't nothing but the Holy Ghost. But God is saying detach yourself from the people that mean you no good. Some of you are trying to, 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 to go through somebody else's process in life. It's not the time for you to go through those process, that, that process in life, the somebody else process in life. You have to understand that you are an overcomer. Yes, sir. Life, life is uh, something that nobody can prepare you for. You may think, you may say, you may ask, um, uh, you, you, you may think, or you may try to try to figure out certain things in your life, you try to process it, but God has said, listen, you can't stop the process that I'm trying to put you to. There's a certain destination, there's a certain destiny, there's a certain goal that I'm trying to get you at, but you have to go through the process. You have to be able to go through the process. You can't skip certain cycles in your life. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. So at the beginning of my message, I said this. I said that uh, it's hard for me to preach something that I, that, that I haven't been through or haven't gone through. So let me give you a quick example. Before, uh, before I even moved here to Florida, but I was here visiting Florida with my family, Years ago, I have never had a mango before. I didn't know what it tastes like. I, I heard of mangoes, but I never heard of it before because I never experienced a mango. Come on, come on. And so then when I was down here for our family reunion, a family reunion one year on my mother's side of the family, uh, I was at one of my cousin's houses, and I saw these big, beautiful trees out back, and I was like, wow, what are those? And they said, those are mangoes. I said, oh, okay. They said, yeah, it's a, it's a fruit. You never had a mango before? Yeah. I said, no, I never had a mango before. So that's like, well, go out back and, and go get one from off the tree. So, of course, you see mangoes and stuff all on the ground or whatever. And so my cousin grabbed one from off the tree and brought it. He said, yeah, this one right here, it feels right, it feels right. And so he began to, you know, he cut it open, open. He was like, so listen, so here, try it. And so when I bit into the mango, it was so it, it was so good and so sweet and it's so juicy that it began to run down my cheeks and I was like, oh my god. And I couldn't stop eating because it was just that good. I finally got a chance to experience the mango. And so a lot of times in life, the reason why certain people can't preach about certain things is because they never experience certain things in life. Now, I've experienced loneliness in life and sometimes that is a cycle that's in life but I'm here to tell you on today that you don't stay there in that lonely place you don't stay there in that dark place all the rest of your life what you have to learn how to do is come out of that lonely place it's all right for a time in the season because the Bible says weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and I'm here to tell you today that Pastor Shannon here is announcing that today your joy comes in the morning. I need you to put it in the chat. I want you to stop set a five to somebody that's standing next to you and say, my joy is here. 
my joy is here, my situation is here, and hallelujah. And one of the big, biggest challenges of experiencing loneliness is number one is admitting it. You may know somebody right now that may be experiencing just a little bit of loneliness. Sometimes uh, uh, you can see it on somebody. You can feel it on somebody. It feels like that they're, you know, in a state of depression all the time. So let me help you out uh, how you can tell is e either you yourself or a friend of yours are going through some lo uh, aspects of loneliness. Number one, they spend a lot of time by themselves. They spend a lot of time by themselves. We'll start at the, uh, that, that's the most obvious one right there today. They spend a lot of time by themselves. They lock themselves away. They always by themselves. They never want to hang out. They never want to be around nobody. Uh, that right there. That shows, and so, and this is a lot of times what I believe personally with the pandemic did. It, it allowed people to uh, separate themselves from people because number one, uh, the enemy knows that if we get closer together and we build each other up as a family, if we build each other up as a church, that the enemy knows that he is already a defeated foe and why not try to defeat God's people right by separating. <laughs> Come on, Pastor, take your time. They spend time alone. Number two, they are uh, they are unproductive. They sit around and they know that they're supposed to be doing uh, something, and then they end up not doing. They're unproductive. Come and, they, and it's within their willpower to be able to get the job done. I'm here to tell you to get your lazy self up off your couch and become productive in the name of Jesus. How are you doing really good on that uh, device there? <laughs> Let's see here, number three. They get stuck on negativity. Let me tell you something. That is the problem in the kingdom of God right now. That they get stuck in negativity. Oh, they, every time they turn around, that they always think somebody talking about them. Every time they turn around, they think somebody hating on them. Every time they turn around, they don't have enough money. And every time they turn around, they don't have, they always stuck in a rut. And it seems like they can't get out of the rut. And I'm here to tell you today that you need to get away from those people that feel like they're always stuck in a rut. Let me tell you something. People who always negative just for no reason, being a negative nasty. Oh, I came to work today. How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good, but uh, you know, my back is always hurting. Oh, I, I just can't never get no relief from the back. Oh, my feet, and, oh, and the kids is always driving me crazy. And all this other kind of stuff is happening to me in my life. Come up out of that right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You get stuck in that negativity. Come out of those negative things right now in the name of Jesus. Number four, they seem to be sick all the time. They always sick all the time. Tiredness does sometimes, you know, I understand people that, you know, they're tired here and there and every now and then, you know, yeah, because I work. I mean, I work 50 hours a week, so of course I'm tired. Um, you know, yeah, I have to, um, uh, I have to cook food, cook dinner for the family and I got to go to work. And yeah, I'm just a little bit tired. You know, okay, those are normal things, but I'm just talking about somebody that's tired and they sick and they always experience some kind of just like, oh, uh, I, 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 they found something here, and then they found the lump there, and then my feet start hurting, and they start sweating, and all this other kind of stuff. And, but baby, you ain't did nothing. You've been sitting on the couch all day long. What you sick from? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm coughing. Nobody getting offended by what I'm saying. <laughs> because it's one thing to be actually physically sick. Come on. So I used to have a boss. <laughs> When I, when I lived in New Jersey working at KFC Taco Bell. She said, D, she said, I don't understand these hypochondriacs. <laughs> Every time I turn around, they sick. Yeah, yeah. They calling out of work, they don't know how to come to work. What's wrong with them? How come they always sick? 
Ain't no reason for you to be sick. And so she, <laughs> Miss Hannah, she always talked about them, them people that hypochondriac kids. I don't understand. How come you 18, 19 years old? What you sick? What you sick of? What's wrong with you? What's you sick? Sick of what? Sick of playing the video game? Sick that you got mad because somebody beat you in bed? Is that the reason why you sick? <laughs> Number five, they, they seem overly attached to their possessions. That was deep for me right there. Over people who are in a lonely place, they seem to be overly attached to their possessions or their hobbies. When someone feels lonely, they are more likely to try to distract themselves with other things in life. I ain't read none of my notes here, but I guess I'll read this. So if, so if you have someone, if you recognize or realize that you're always talking about um, a certain thing and, and it, it just always, you know, it, it's always flying around and, and they, they, every time you see them, that, you know, they always talk about this one particular thing. So, let me say this without saying any names. I know a family. <laughs> you got to chill on that button. <laughs> I know a family. She know a little on that button. I taught a little too well. <laughs> we know a family that every single time we come around them, that they got to bring up this one particular subject. And I was so what so the last time we was with them, we was like, hey, you know, um a great time, great time of food and fellowship and all this other kind of stuff. And next thing I know, it show enough. Here it come, here it come. <laughs> I was like, now we done had us a nice little time <laughs> just enjoying Jesus. <laughs> and enjoying everything else, and then all of a sudden, boom, yep. there it was. <laughs> and we was like, okay, what in the world? How come this happened? Why is this coming up right now? And so I, we was just like, all right, well, you know, praise God, you know. And But that right there shows that there is a level of loneliness that's going on. But we as believers, on today I'm going to wrap this up really quick. But we as believers should feel like that we are in the dumps. We should feel like that we got to keep going around in circles. Round and around and around and around we go. No, we shouldn't feel that way. It's time for us to dump that attitude. It's time for us to dump that situation. I want somebody to shout out, it's time to get up. It's time to get up in the name of Jesus. It's time for you to come out of that depression. It's time for you to come out of that despair. It's time for you to come out of that loneliness. God has created you to feel like that you're something. God has created you to feel like that you're a somebody. You may feel like that you're a nobody, but I'm here to tell you today that you are somebody. Come out of that lonely pit. Come out of that loader bar in the name of Jesus. Come on, get up out of that grave. You got to get up out of that grave. Shout out, I don't care where you are. I want you to shout out, I am not alone. I am not alone in this situation. I am not alone in this circumstance because God is with me. His light and his staff, it shall comfort me. Now before I, oh God, I feel Oh, oh, oh yes, I feel a little preach, but let me give me the last four points here. Kingdom steps to come out of loneliness. Number one, you need to admit to yourself that you are not alone. Type in the comments and say, I am not alone. You there, you got, got people surrounded around about you that make you feel like that you're not alone. That people are there because sometimes people, I've come to discover this, that sometimes people can be in a crowd of people and feel like that they're alone. But God said that I would never leave you, nor for I would never forsake you. The Bible says, I seek the righteous forsaken, nor his seed bearing bread. So I'm here today to tell you that you're not alone. 
You're not the only one facing the battle that you're in right now. Stop suffering in silence. Hallelujah. Number two, practice being grateful. I need you right now to practice being grateful. The Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless your name. For the Lord, he is good and his mercy endureth forever and his truth endureth to all generations. I need you to be grateful in this hour. I need to say, God, I thank you. God, I love you. God, I adore you. God, I need you every single day and every single hour. God, give thanks and begin to appreciate every single thing that you have for you and that's lined up in your life. Number three, don't just sit and do nothing. Just don't sit and do nothing. Participate in some meaningful activity. You got to participate in something meaningful to you. That's going to help you come out of that loneliness. So if it's something, what is it that you really want to do on the inside? This is the reason why you have to know who you are. You got to know what your likes and you got to know what your dislikes. As a matter of fact, let me just say this really quick. I'm going to expose myself really quick. So now I'm here in Florida. Um, you know, they do the rocket launches. They do the rocket launches. So, you know, they've been waiting to, you know, launch the Artemis rocket. And I, I was like, man, I, I, I want to go see this because when they, the, when they launched the rocket a couple of weeks ago and I was driving home, I said, honey, I said, I think they just launched a rocket. I'm watching it fly through the air. I was like, yo, that is so amazing. I'm the kind of guy, so I'm a nerd, I'm a geek. So I'm the kind of person, I'll go on YouTube and I'll watch the, 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 the cameras from the rocket being launched and I'll watch them go up, come down, duh, 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 duh. so that's just me. My wife, you just weird. You just weird. Really, really. But that's something meaningful to me. That's something that I like to do. And so this afternoon, I got a text message that said, hey, they launching another rocket tonight. I said, hey, let's go. <laughs> So tonight, we're going to go watch the rocket launch tonight, if it don't get scrubbed tonight. So we're going to go see, we're going to go down to Cape Canaveral, we're going down there to uh, Nassau, and we're going to go watch the rocket launch, so yes and amen. So that, that kind of stuff makes me happy. It probably don't make my wife happy, she might be like, this craziness or whatever. <laughs> so listen, my last point here is, uh, this is so important, don't give me no organ on this one, because I'm going to force to hear this. This is so important. I'm looking. I got two cameras to look at. Let me look at both of y'all. Stop beating yourself up. Ooh, come on, Pastor. Stop beating yourself up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. Stop it right now. My God. Because number one, that's the word. We beat ourselves up so much. Yes. And then we got the world. Beating us up even more. And don't be a black man or a black woman trying to do something. I ain't got no problem with other race or anything like that. But because, again, I ain't experienced being white. I ain't experienced being Puerto Rican. I ain't experienced being Filipino. I ain't experienced that right there. But I experienced being a black man growing up in America. So I'm here to tell you today, stop beating yourself up because the world beats you, beat us up more. So you need to grab some uplifting scriptures. And so that's the reason why now wrapping back around to my scripture that the Lord, he is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me to lie down in green pastures. So I know that I'm not alone because God, he done already led me to the place that I'm supposed to be. And I know that he's with me and I know he's around me. Come on, honey, I need you to drive this right here. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He led me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me with my sights to still waters. Hallelujah. He renews my strength because sometimes I feel like that I'm weak. I feel like that I'm not going to make it. I feel like that. 
God isn't there nor he's around. I feel down and out and I may feel a little weak, but God, he comes in, he renews my strength. He then looks down at me, he says, Shannon, get up out of that grave. Come up out of that situation. Come out of Lodabar right now in the name of Jesus. You got to come out of there. For God, you are my strength. Strength like no other. So Father God, I thank you God for being my strength. Thank you God for being there for me. Thank you God for taking care of me. Thank you God because I know that you will meet me. God, you will guide me. God, you will provide for me. And I thank you, God, for doing it. For even when I walk through the dark valleys, the Bible says that I will not be afraid because I know that you're close to me. I need you to find somebody and say, God, I know that you're close to me. God, I know that you'll never leave me. Nor will you forsake me. And I thank you, God, for being there for me. Thank you, God, for never leaving me. God, I know I'm not in this by myself. I know that I got my friends and my loved ones. They right there close by me. And I thank you, God, for comforting me. Because it said, my the rock and your staff, it shall protect me. It shall comfort me. Hallelujah. The Bible says, even when my wicked and my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a hope shall camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, in the word of God shall I be confident. I'm here to tell you today that you're not alone. Psalms 27 and 10 says, Though your mother and your father may forsake you, but God will rescue me. He's there for me. I'm here to tell you today that you're not alone. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid of the thing that terrifies you. For the Lord your God goes before you. So Father God, I thank you, God, that you will always go before me, God. That you will always go before me. That every single distraction, that every single despair, that tried to rise up against me, that you're going to go before me, and you're not going to lead me into a wrong place. You won't lead me into my doom and my destiny. You won't lead me to destructive places. You said no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, you said that you shall condemn. So I'm here to tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, you are not alone. Isaiah 40, 41 and 10 says, do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will uphold you with my right hand. So God is here to tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, that you are not alone. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares. He cares for you, my sister. He cares for you, my brother. I'm here to tell you today that you are not alone. He is the mother to the motherless. He's the father to the fatherless. He's the friend to the friendless. He's the husband to the husbandless. Hallelujah. I don't care what you may be facing today, but God is here to send me a word, a message to you today to tell you that you're not alone. Hallelujah. You are not alone, but I am here with you. Though I may seem like that I'm far away, but God says, I am here to stay. I'm here in your belly. I'm here 
spit in your spirit. I'm here right next to you. When two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. So if me and my wife are the only two people that's in the building, God is says that I am here. You don't need to look for nobody else because there's angels come all around about you. There's angels sitting in every one of these seats, sitting outside the door. We dispatch the angels right now in the name of Jesus to those people that feel like that they're lost and they feel like they're alone and they feel like that they got nowhere to go. But I'm here to tell you today, by the mercies of God, hallelujah, that God, he's there for you. Good afternoon, One Touch Ministries. May the Lord God bless you real good. Because I know that I am not alone. I live on the inside of you, says the Lord. I live to see you live. I live to see you prosper. I live to see you happy. I live to see that you have the joy on the inside of you. Family may walk out on you. Friends may walk out on you. But I'm here to declare to you today, take me up one key. Your pastor may leave you. He may walk out on you. Your wife may walk out on you. Your favorite cousin may lie to you and may talk about you, may mistreat you, maybe they abuse you, that make you feel like that you're lost, make you feel like that you're alone. David said that my foot almost slipped and I'm here to tell you today, don't slip back into that loneliness after today. Don't slip back into that despair anymore. Don't slip back into Lodabar anymore. For God, he is with you. He will not never forsake you. You may feel like that you've been left for dead. You may feel like that your name got dragged through the mud. I mean drug real good. Said that you were stealing the money. Said that you have left your wife uh, for some other man. Uh, left your wife uh, for some other woman. Uh, left your job. Uh, and you knew that you didn't have no other job. Uh, and so now you broke. Uh, busted and disgusted. Uh, they drug uh, your neck through the mud. Uh, through the muck and mockery. And so you said that I feel so dirty. Uh, because everything that they said, it was a lie from the pit of hell. But God is saying to you today, that right now in the name of Jesus, that you're not alone. I was there with you the whole time. But now I'm here to lift you up, lift you up, lift you up. So all the world can see, because you lifted up the name of Jesus. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm here to tell you today that you're not alone. You may have feel like that you were wandering in the night, waiting for a place to hide. You was looking for some kind of way to get away from folks. And your soul was lonely and weary. And you just needed a little hope today. But I'm here to tell you today that I'm bringing a, just a little bit of hope, just a little bit of glimpse, just a little bit of something so that you can say that God, he is with me. I'm here to bring you just a little bit of hope. Hallelujah. I tried with all my might, but I just couldn't win this fight. Hallelujah. I'm 
slowly drifting into the night. And just when I thought I ran out of road, there came a man that I didn't know. He just appeared out of nowhere. Hallelujah. He was able to pick me up and he turned me around and placed my feet on a solid ground. I don't know about you, but Jesus, as the Clark sisters would say, Jesus brought the such. Jesus brought the sunshine. He picked me up, turned me around. He placed my feet on a solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God for healing my body, for healing my heart, for touching my life and changing my heart. Hallelujah. I'm here to declare today that you are not alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you are not alone. We know that we are not alone in this situation. We know that we're not alone in the circumstance. We thank you, Father. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We know that we're not alone. And listen, right now in the name of Jesus, I just want you guys to celebrate and know that you are not alone. That God is definitely right there with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus.
if you knew that you was in a lonely place. I need you right now to give God the best praise. Right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. God, we thank you, God. Coming out. We're coming out. Coming up, up, up and out. 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 Get up out of that grip. 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 Man, dance.
we ain't missed no meal. God put gas in our car. When we ain't have no money, we put gas in the car. He able to allow us to pay the bills. When we ain't have the money to pay the bills. a surprise check. Hallelujah, God. He sent us a surprise check in the middle. You may say it's $14.50, but next time it'll be $140.50. Next time it'll be $1,000. $450. Next time it'll be $14,500. And so I've got to give him the praise that he deserves because he deserves of all the praise.
I'm alone. I'm, seems like nobody hears me. Seems like nobody really cares. Although I have my spouse and I have my children. And, but God, I just feel so alone. And I really pray that today's message every person under the sound of my voice that you can leave this day and every day going forward saying I'm not alone God is here he's with me
that all these cards right now in the name of Jesus, save them, deliver them, send healing to their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for doing it. Doing it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, we're just going to dismiss the service right here, right now, just like that, because I truly believe that God is going to continue doing something here in the midst of the service. For those of you who are on Zoom, we'll leave the Zoom on just for a little bit longer. But listen, for those of you who didn't get a chance to give, still have the opportunity to give. We have the information down below. You can give by way of cash app, the number one, touch M, or you can go to give a five, download the app, type in one touch ministries or Lando. You'll see our logo that you see on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, we don't have it on YouTube yet. But you can download the One Touch Ministries from Orlando. You'll see our logo as well as my handsome face. And you can give that way. Listen, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to One Touch Ministries. God bless you. We love you. Now may the Lord God give you peace. May his faith shine upon you during this season. Jesus Christ, my name.